it's an argument opening up a clear advantage at the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by a... Hello. Remember us? Us, the four, well, three tipsters. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere about the, the three tipsters and the straight man. Uh, but welcome to champ.ie, your weekly dose of racing information that is quite simply incomparable to any racing information you get anywhere else. And it is brought to you thanks to the generosity, and we thank them uh, very much indeed, of Stablemate, who are again sponsoring this week's programme. And uh, we want you to participate. We will hear what uh, these three... Eminent, at least that's what it says here, gentlemen, uh, come up with by way of lose our uh, winners uh, over the big races this weekend. And then, of course, we will have the five big races and we want you to have a five cast on them and you can win. The competition is going to run on. But what you need to do is put your selections in, not only into the comments, but also on the app if you want to enter. And this competition, um, Barry will remind you later exactly what the prize is. It's well worth winning. And as well as that, you get a lot of brownie points with your mates. You must have. This might well be empty before the end of the season. We might even get somebody who does know what they're talking about on uh, one of the programmes. Anyway, let me introduce them to you. Uh, they are very well known to each and every one of you, including the Gardi. Uh, Tom Coyle, <laughs> young up-and-coming rising star trainer. Ronan Groom, the Irish field legend, um, and also Barry Doyle, without whom, as they say, none of this would be uh, possible. Let's get straight in. A, a, a really good weekend on both sides of the Irish Sea, and with, of course, the uh, flat season reaching its climax as well. But we're going to concentrate on the winter game jumping because this is a big weekend with meetings in the West Country in the UK. There's a, a race over the Grand National Fences, and of course, the two days of Down Royal as well. And it's the peak of uh, the uh, Northern Irish season with more than 400,000 euro up for grabs. Is Barry going to go and get his share of it? Anyway, let's go straight in and talk about Friday and talk about the big race at Exeter, the Holden Gold Cup, a field of five, top weight, the dual grade one winner, Grenatin, but he's got to give a stone and more to his rivals. Ronan. Yeah, um, I would. I'm kind of assuming. I'm working back, thinking Grenadine will be. It's it's all about the um, Tingle Creek for him. I'm kind of thinking. I could see him drifting tomorrow. I see he's in a hundred to thirty, but I'd be very surprised if uh, Paul Nichols isn't thinking along the same lines as he did last year, and he was uh, caught for fitness here badly last year before improving significantly for Sandown. And I think uh, Reed and Paul Nichols' table two are, I think, the two great ones at Sandown are what he's all about this season. So I'll be concentrating on the top two. And to be honest, Mike, I get it very hard to split these two. The two second season chasers progressive, have the scope to progress anyway, and the pretty smart novice chase form last season. We're uh, talking third, about Warlords and uh, third time lucky. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, look, third time lucky. And kind of got slagged off towards the latter stages of, of the season and uh, having posted some nice nice form earlier in the season but his form uh, to be second to Edward Stone and the Kingmaker looks pretty smart now uh, Warlord was actually only beaten in races grade one races he, he, he won everything else he was in and um, I, I, I actually don't think there's much between them at all and that's why I'm, I'm probably going to have no bet uh, uh, it's, it's not a race that you can really take a take a strong opinion on i don't think so happy to let the lads go here i just think they're too no this is, it's anyone's guess who 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 can progress off that mark the most first time out here both trainers are pretty confident i know the tizzards like this race used to run q card here every year won it last year el dorado allen and dan skelton was pretty bullish in his comments as well about third time lucky this week so i'm happy to let this one go and see if the lads have a stronger opinion than me mike Tommy, so um, i mean the two mile division potentially is a, is the deepest of the lot. We've got a uh, we've got Shishkin. Um uh we're not quite sure where one or two of the novices from last year are gonna go. Uh, and uh, we've also of course got Edward Stone who was so impressive 
winning the arc last year. So um, <laughs> you're going to have to be something special to do anything at this division, aren't you? Yeah, that's for sure. And I probably the t- the two at the top in the market, I suppose their form really comes true. Edward Stone as well, all last year. Um, the run last December, there was only a neck between these two when they were no good, uh, when they weren't good enough for Edward Stone. And I just find it funny that Warlord, that was off level weights, and Warlord is getting four pounds off him tomorrow, um, which probably swings it in my favour for him. Um, I suppose the Tizards have started the season well. Um, he's had eight winners there in the last couple of weeks. Um, the Skeletons are, are, are flying high as well. Um, there's not going to be a whole lot between them, but I do think that four pound is probably going to be sway it towards warlord for me um I, c- I couldn't see granatine he was poor in this last year he was he won a, I thought a poor reunion of a two years ago when barry doyle somehow pulled him out of somewhere and was screaming down the phone at us hmm. um he I, I as ronan said i think he he's for later on in the year but um yeah it's it'll be a hot it, it, it's a nice little race uh, but i think just the four pound swings at the tizard's way free and of course, with the Nojamin and Shishkin and the others waiting in the wings in the Tingle Creek, um, Barry, yeah. um, this is going to be a case of grab a decent pot while you can, isn't it? Yeah, first of all, I wouldn't put uh, Shishkin in the same breath as an Um I, I'm <laughs> We'll stick to this race for now. Um, Grenatine, I think he wins this. I think he's a good price. Um, 100 to 30 represents it. It'd be boring if we all agreed, wouldn't it? Um, Nichols. Stable form, absolutely fantastic at the moment. He's on a, currently on a 39% uh, strike rate. Uh, get what the lads were saying about last year. Um, Grenatine, he took the run. I thought his best efforts, his career best, Grenatine, was his most recent start at Sandown. A 12 length winner um, on that occasion. 165 rate. It went, he's gone up three pounds to 168. Um, if you actually look at the weights, he's actually two pounds well in. Um, in terms of the weight, he actually, I know he's given away weight, but if you look at the ratings of the others and the weight they're carrying, um, Grenatine actually comes out best at the weights. Um, but, but Barry, when, when he won this two years ago, it was like a terrible race. Yeah, he, you know, like he, I know he was rated a lot he lower. Was, he, 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 yeah, but it, and he didn't meet Anton coming out in the novice division like the two boys at the top of the market either. Like, like even from he last year, he's a decent well record last year, yeah, look, apart from last year, he's a decent record fresh. He's the only one in the field uh, with course and distance form. There's only three runners. It's not your typical Holden Gold Cup. Usually you have a bigger field. I'm all about him here. I think he has to be the play in here at the prices. Class horse in the race. Apart from last year, said so he has a decent re- record fresh. Won this in 2020. Good ground will really suit him. I think Warlord wants further. Um, and when it comes to third time, lucky, he's the tongue strap on for the first time. Why is that? Um He's never a horse I could catch right. I think he's he's always, I'm not surprised he's the one for money. 13 to 8 from 15 to 8. Grenatine, in my view, wins this. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the way I'm playing. Well, you, 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 I'd also say, I think Dolos might go quite well at a decent price. They've had the rain. It's going to be good ground at Exeter, despite all the fears. All right, let's move to Saturday. We can skip through this one quite quickly uh, because if you can try to read into the mind of Gordon Elliott. Uh, and that is the Labrooks champion chase at Dan Royal. And they too have had the rain. They're going to get more rain overnight into Saturday. That's why Frodon hasn't gone, as he presented it on a plate for G. Elliot. Um, Barry. This is going to sound absolutely mental, but uh, Envoy Allen wins it. Right, Envoy. Ronan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, lads? I, I, I was kind of leaning towards him as well in this for some reason. I, it's not the maddest thing he's ever said in this. Can I can I give my case? Can I just give my case yeah. very, very quickly on he's this? Very, very good. Also, is it Invoy Allen, yeah. right. R- okay, handles soft ground, absolutely loves down Royal. Um, he's won four times fresh in the past. Um, three-time a winner at down Royal. To me, Gralvin wants better grounds. Soft ground is going to suit Envy Allen. Running them over the wrong trip last season. Still lightly raced over fences. Lads, he's a big, big price. Ronan, you kept very quiet, unusually. I I was I was thinking one of the lads was going to put up Envy Allen and, and uh, probably could, would have said it was uh, Basil. But, like, I mean, his three wins at Down Royal, he's been 1-4, to 1-14, and four to eleven. Um, 
it's madness. I was looking at his profile earlier on. Like from day one, Gordon used to call him um, Gold Cup horse. This is his 18th start and only his second over three miles. Like it's it's madness to think when you have such an idea about a horse that they don't even get there or they don't even run there. Eventually, how how a horse's kind of career path can change. But look, he's an interesting runner. I wouldn't back him at eight to one. I wouldn't probably back him at all. To be honest, I'd happy to let him run. Uh, I got uh, looking at the race, and I can't see any reason why Galvin doesn't go off odds on here. Uh, I think the whole race has been set up for him. He's had the prep run as opposed to Conflaid. Like Conflaid is a good horse, and um, you know he bollocked himself trying to trying to run after Alaho in the Ryanair and came down, then ran a huge race, um, nearly caught um, Clandes Ovo in entry. Like that's really really good form, but he's going right handed here. Uh, I think Gordon's a bit worried about that, and he's running first him up. And you're thinking probably Leopardstown is his going to be his bag. Gordon probably thinking about that as his number one targets this season. Galvin's had the run, probably ran better than he did last year at Punchestown, probably ran to a higher figure. Uh, he's race fit, Davies on him, course form, there's no fraud on there this year. Um, I, I, I can't see him going off odds against, to be honest. Kenboy seems like he's passed it as well there on the wane, and Beacon Edge looks, looks out of his class here. So, I'll, I'll galvanize. Do you not think uh, in Vialens a, a big price runner? I mean, the campaign him over two miles last season, finished third in the champion chase behind an urge. I mean, I mean, that's no disgrace. 14 lengths travel into the race, a step up and trip, soft ground goes well, fresh. Gee, lads, it's a big price. It is too big, in my view. It's all about the trip to me. Is he a three miler or isn't he? He always was a three miler from day well, one. Let's move on. In the first 10 minutes of the program, we've heard the words madness and past it. We've only done two races so far. So uh, let's see what race three throws up. Um, the most competitive race on the Down Royal Card on Saturday is this uh, two mile hurdle, two off just at 158. Um, and a field here of 13. And the top weight here is Tony Martin's Tudor City. An old friend, but is he He must be too old at the age of 10, isn't he, Tom? Um, yeah, and I think ground is probably a thing for him as well. Um, you say this is the most competitive race of the weekend, and I'm going to put my nap of the weekend in this race. Um, I fancy Pat's choice down at the bottom for Gordon Elliott. Myself and I see Barry laughing there, but we were having a bit of a conversation there earlier. Um, for me, the trip the last day bet him. Uh, he travelled best and just didn't get up the hill in Galway. I'd say the ground, we've had a drying day today, we have a drying day tomorrow. Um, I'd say the ground will be a bit better in Down Royal because it does dry quick enough up there. Um, forecast is I, heavy rain Friday night into Saturday. Uh, all right, well, the forecast I was looking at is it's a bit... But as we all know, um, <laughs> uh, uh, believing a weather forecast is like... Um, Taking yeah. Bernard Matthews seriously to the when he said to the turkey, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this lad, um, he won his maiden hurdle in Navin um, the time before that. I actually had a runner and he had a hard horse to finish third that I think is fairly useful in morning logic. Um, and we kind of didn't see what way he went. Probably in hindsight, we probably should have ran a bit closer to the pace. But Davy Russell made it very simple. He blinkers on first time, he booked out and jumped jump from hurdle to hurdle and I expect Sam Ewing to do the same um, and back to two mile is the big thing he didn't get he didn't get two three but I suppose in Galway it's a tougher track uh, he might get it in more time but with 10 stone is back it's going to be fairly simple for Sam Ewing I'd say he's going to be the pace angle of the race um, so he's going to be my nap for the weekend um, the other one in it is Nibiru um, the only thing about it he won a ladies rider race the actually the same day a past choice won. Um, to be fair, he won it by two lengths, but he had probably the best female jump jockey on it, on his back riding in the race. So that was probably worth Can 10 lengths, know? if not 20 lengths. <laughs> Do you follow the lady riders much, do you? Um, but Maxine O'Sullivan rode him that day. And as we all know, Maxine has ridden plenty of winners, point to point, and even Cheltenham winners. And she kind of rode them all to sleep, to be fair. Um, he got £9 for that, and I think that would probably stop him. But uh, he'll definitely be there, thereabouts. But I think... Tony Martin's got three in the race, of course. Yeah. Um, interesting, we've got to watch the weather, uh, given our earlier comments. 
Uh, where's the groom pin landed here? With what? Sorry, I kind of uh, agree with what um, Thomas is saying there. I like Nibiru. I think he's interesting. Um, I think the ground, the weather forecast I was looking at, I, I know you're saying there's rain, but there's uh, only around four mils um, over Friday night. I could see it drying out. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll wait to see what happens there. But Nibiru is a horse I think could, would like a quick ground. So I thought his run on soft ground at Leopardstown on the flat last time was quite good. Um, he's potentially interesting. Tony Merton won this race a couple of years ago uh, with Golden Spear, and he always seems to send one up here. Um, Past Choice is owned, I'm sure, uh, is interesting. He's, he's owned by um, the, Sloans. Uh, the Sloans, who are you know have a lot to do with Down Royal and sponsor races up there. They they're like the WKD Group and all that uh, food and drinks kind of company. So I'm sure that's been laid out uh, for this race, and it's interesting that. Uh, Tom, you like him. Uh, he's a nice, progressive-looking horse and could run well. The one I thought was interesting, no odds here, but take all for Seamus Fahey. Um, like, first time out last season, he beat, uh, he beat a horse called uh, Cade Boy. Good race down in Wexford. If he runs that standard here off a mark of 123, he'd be right there. Um, he's wearing a, a hood and a tongue tie for the first time. Um uh, I'd make him interesting. He's a higher rating over over fence. He's 135, he's 12 pounds lower here. Uh, chased on Palace Rock in a nice race at Navin last year over hurdles as well. I think he could go out at a decent price. Seeing the race also is Douglas DC, who's got headgear on. Um, if he runs as well here as he did the other day at Sprint Valley, it'll be uh, a real opportunity for the horse to prove how versatile he is. Uh, Barry. Yeah, this is a savage race. I, I, I remember watching Janet and win this uh, up, up and down right a couple of years ago, and he went on to, to obviously run in grade ones at the end of the season. Obviously, Pat's choice. Tom is trying to talk me into Pat's choice. Um, I saw him beat Morning Logic in Navin. That was a really good performance. And I think next time he ran into a real smart one at Galway, we were just saying off air that um, the horse of Barry Connells that bet Pat's choice, um, he could potentially shape up into into a graded horse and um, yeah, was definitely. off the track for quite some time. Um, the one I have written down is the, is the obvious one. Rona mentioned to uh, knee brew. Um, for me, I think there's plenty of pace on in this race. And that's, that's why, that's why I make this, the, the interesting angle in here, plenty of pace on Pat's choice likes to go forward. Um, I think uh, Pinkerton given his, his, his proven stamina at say nice on softer ground, he'd probably go forward. I think knee brew is potentially laid out for this. There could be more to come. I don't think nine pounds, the way he won at Navin, I don't think now nine pounds is definitely going to stop this horse. Um, Tony, he looks teed up for the race. I love this run on the flat, hands and heels on soft ground. He hasn't won on soft ground, but it was a real decent run over a mile and two. Pipe opener last time. His pipes are well open because he's been on the go quite a while. But um, I think that'll set him up nicely for this. And there uh, could be a lot more to come. Coming off the pace, typical Tony Martin. For me, do you know what? I'm going to stick with my original fancy. I think Nibru would be tough to stop in here. And if you're getting anything over three to one, I think it's a decent price. Okay, that's um, the hurdles done. Uh, we will hear from Noel Mead a little bit later on. And he's got runners all over the place this weekend. And always good to hear uh, what the master of Tuva has to say for himself. But let's look at these two big British handicap chases uh, on Saturday. The 61st running of the Badger Beer makes it the longest running commercial sponsorship and uh, a decent field. 13 of them go to post um, at Wynn Canton, headed by Frodon, rerouted from Down Royal. Um, but I'm not sure quite whether this might even backfire, only because um, since Nichols made the announcement, it's hardly stopped raining. And the ground, which was like a road just about a week or so ago, it is now basically good ground but he's got a very strong hand of course with Enrillo Camp Junior placed in the race last year and, and poor old Potterman who's been second in it twice um, who wants first innings on this Mr Groom mute oh I'm back um yeah I mean I'm the one I'm interested in would need the ground to stay decent um like I'm, like I just on throw it on he is interesting. He's 150 down to 158 here. If you if you scrap the second half of the season, and he does have a few excuses there. Nicholas' horses were in bad form. A lot of times he was running 
he's got the old uh, the old Nichols Windock special, uh, and he's in here with Brian Eon. Uh I can see why he's there. He looks short now. This is his forty fifth run. So he's got to come down at some point, but I can see why yeah. people are liking him. Um, I just think just keep this pretty simple. The 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 one horse who looks really progressive and loads of scope to improve is Lord Lord Accord. I thought he did it really well at, at Cheltenham last day. He stayed on well from the Wolf. Good staying performance there. That was just a seven star over fences. He's a horse that needs good ground, so I would be worried if it went soft. But his form on, on good ground reads one six two one one five three one. Uh, Neil Mulhan has a decent record with three mile chasers and these big handicap chases and he only got five pounds for the Cheltenham run uh, and, and in, a ra- in a race with a, with a, with a horse a few of these are you know well past it or, or not well not well past it but well exposed like the Captain or Potterman um, you know a few of them El Presente a few of the regulars in this race they look maybe that yeah. they might be on the way now so uh, Lord Accord for me Say El Presente and Rocco, uh, the last two winners. I thought you were going to say that Barry Doyle was past it for a minute. Um, he and is. of course, the other thing to remember, Barry, is of course that you know Frodon will go from the front, and this is this has always been a bit of a front runner's mm. track. Yeah, I just you mentioned it's come up a couple of times last year's form. Stay away from that, and uh, there's a couple in here out of the handicap as well. Um, the one I like think there could be more to come from slip away ben pauling's horse is running decent this season so far uh seven-year-old son of stowaways only had five runs over fences last seen when winning on decent ground at Pert on the 22nd of uh, april um he's the one for me he's won off a break as well in j- last january at subtle um off a mark of 120 in in, in handicap company he's got up 13 pounds since um obviously the win off a of one tri- on off one two three at a uh, Pert. Um, he went up uh, a total of uh, ten pounds for that win, so um, he's he's the most interesting in here. Nico de Bonville on board twelve to one. I think it's a fair old price now. I'm happy to take on those at the top of the market. You look at Froda and Ronan's right. He has to come down at some stage. Happy to take him on. Happy to take Enrillo on. He's one that's let so many punters down so often. Uh, Paul Nichols has talked him up uh, for years. It seems Enrillo. He's an eight year old now. He's he's had a wind up. Um, nine to two is the choice of Harry Cobden. Take him on. Um, he's the most progressive type in the race for me. Is slip away Ben Pauling, number eight. The ones below him are out of the handicap, so I'd be staying away from them as well. So, 12 to one slip away. My selection, strange old Saturday, isn't it? We're in November, and Nick had a Bonneville able to take that right because Nicky Henderson doesn't have a runner. Strange that. Um, in your riding days, Mr. Coy, what would you like to have been on in this? Um, I don't think my riding skills would have got me a ride in this race. Um, look, I'll keep it simple. If Froden turns up like he did at the start of last season and bet Galvin around down Royal, really, they shouldn't see which way he goes. I know the season tailed off from, but obviously he might come back fresh again this year. And if he does and he's in that sort of form, they'll do well to see where, where he goes. I'd say. Will be frozen for me. Okay, and the last one. These races are all nice and early this Saturday. Do remember to make sure you get your bets on and get your your five pass in in good time, uh, because we've got races at early days with the Badger Beer coming up at one fifty as the third race. And of course, remember if you're looking for pointers for the future, uh, we've got Tyne Hill Steeple Chasing debut at Exeter on Friday and McFabulous making his chasing debut on that win Canton card. But there is also a race that always punters love, and that is a race over the Grand National Fences. Uh, I'm not convinced by the quality of it, but it's certainly competitive, and they've got plenty of quality. 15 go at 2.11 in the running of the Boyle Sports. Best odds guaranteed on racing Grand Sefton. Two for gold, a class act is a top weight likely favorite here broken halo and fascinating jesse harrington sends one over called lifetime ambition who would be my idea of one to go very close anybody agree with me um barry doyle yeah, yeah i think he wins a, um it's obviously competitive but but seven to one is a fair price i'm very surprised this horse is seven to one um he looks absolutely tailor-made 
for the entry fences. Um, a huge run in a grade one last time. He's only beaten six lengths by Capadano. And I think Capadano is going to prove a real decent start in, in grade one open company this season. Um, he's only a pound higher in Britain. Comes in here off a mark of 151. Sean O'Keefe has gone over. It's his sole ride on the card. He was entered in down ride as well for the two and a half mile, for the two mile three grade two. Um, fascinating that they actually come here. Uh, he's won well fresh, won at down Royal last season, this exact time of the year. Soft ground isn't going to be an issue. This is probably one of my bets we, best bets of the weekend. Seven to one, huge price. In the words of the old uh, spring on this, uh, Ronan, agree or disagree? I've muted him with, again. Uh, I uh, I probably do agree with um, with Basil here. I, I, I think yeah, it's you know, there's a shock, shock of the day. The two men agree. Yeah, some jumper uh, this horse. Yeah. yeah, he jumped like a, I remember him uh, this weekend last year. He started off at Down Royal and he put in a, put up an absolute exhibition. Uh, there was a lovely race from it Down Royal that second season uh, chaser race uh, that's on Saturday that Fury Road is in. Um, would have been a really nice option for him again to go back there, but uh, presumably they're doing the inverse of what Frodan is doing and, and coming over here, possibly in search of better ground. But as you said, Mike, the ground has gone against them now. I would have liked him to have a bit of quicker ground here. Um, and that's kind he's of put like, me he, off. He, he, he's by Capgar, Roland, and I don't think I, I don't think the ground is going to be as big an issue to him as, as, as people are saying. I think he'll be fine on it. I don't think the North, oh, they are calling it soft, uh, I don't think the north has had as much rain as the uh, south and southwest have. Sorry, I interrupted. <laughs> um, go on, Ronan. Yeah, no, I, I, I would, I would prefer a quick ground myself. I thought his best run, obviously, last season was a Punchestown uh, running behind Capitano in the Grade One, and a couple of just runs like he was hammered by Blue Lord at Nice on soft ground, ran no such race then again at Punchestown on soft ground. I just have him down as a good ground horse. I think it's a pretty of a negative now, and they probably commit to running him here, and it would just put me off. He, he was the one I was looking at for this race, and at the soft ground angle would just put me off. See, I've actually your citizen in this race last year. He ran disappointingly, but I'm sure they put him away, and and he has a bit of form over defences. He'd possibly be one I'd be be looking at backing on the day. But uh, yeah, as I said, life ambition was kind of my angle into the race, so I'd just be a bit wary now back him. Okay, um, let's pass the parcel. Uh, it's coming your way, uh, Mr. Coyle. Um, and the horse yes, is going to have a fear of supporters, um, but I don't want to bang your drum too much. Where, where, where are you going here? Uh, no, I'll go away from the boys. I, I like spirit of the games for the skeletons. Um, look, he's he's course form, he's fifth in the top of him. He was third in a good handicap in Cheltenham as well. Um, a nice weight in his back with 10 6, I think, as well. Um, course form is a lot like I do agree with the boys lifetime ambition is a way better chaser than he ever was a hurdler and he does jump very well um, and it will stand to him but I just think the hustle and bustle of a handicap like this and spirit of the games has plenty of plenty of uh, knowledge of how getting around the track as well so that will definitely be in his uh, favour another horse you have to give a mention to is the top weight as well he's been a great horse for for the boys and Kim Bailey, um, two for her, two for gold. I was going to say two for the road, um, two for gold, um. One but, of the uh, is Ollie Bell. From Ollie Bell, Bell, yeah. But I, I, like he he's he's an admirable horse. But I think twelve stone lugging around there would probably be just a bit too much from, um. So I, I look, I like the skeleton's horse. He's a bit of an each way price there as well, um. But Jesse's will I, I'd say will definitely be in the shake up as well. But uh, yeah. Okay, brief uh, thoughts on anything else? Uh, any November handicaps or anything you caught the eye? Do you want to hold your hands up if you want to come in here? Anybody got anything to say for themselves? Um, oh, well, it's interesting. Ah, um, now, yes, Mr. Groove is out at the back, second door on the right. Uh, yeah, what, what do you think? Have I muted him again? You see, his, his sound is off, so. Um, Go again. If you could unmute me when I'm clearly talking, that'd be good. I'm going to fix those um, heads, that headset. Look, uh, the, the, just a race I mentioned, the second season, uh, 
chaser race to Dan Royal is a good race. Fury Road is um, he's eleven to ten there. I'd just be worried about him coming back and trip. Um, I, I spoke to uh, Gavin Cromwell earlier on just uh, for a piece of the paper uh, about Vanillier and a few other things, and he, he's got to jump better. It's all about his jumping tomorrow, and I just can't see him acting over two two and a half miles as well. And it's it's really just a jumping exercise for him. So the other horse in the race is interesting to me was uh, Fighter Allen. Now, like Darren Royal wouldn't be a, a Willie Mullins. Darren Royal this time of year definitely wouldn't be Willie Mullins' bag at all. But it's just interesting he starts this horse off here. He was really well backed at Punchestown in a big handicap chase there at the festival. El Barra won it and Fighter Allen, he fell earlier on in the race. But it just suggested to me that they thought maybe he had him right. He's obviously uh, Envoy Allen's half brother. Uh, so there probably is a bit of hype about him, or there always has been a bit of belief in him, and he hasn't got it together yet. But he gets a stone off Fury Road here, and Vanillier over a trip that probably won't suit him. It pro- it probably won't suit him. I just thought he was interesting. He's around three to one mark. Could could be worth not keeping an eye on. Okay, any more for any more? Well, I'll throw in a couple, uh, Mike. Just a couple of a uh, couple of entries that I'm looking forward to over the weekends. Um, at entry, 136, uh, I love the look of Rioca for Harry Fry. It's a five-runner handicap chase, first run in, in, in a handicap chase. I think it could be well treated off his uh, official rate and opening chase mark of 100, and, I think it's a 26, uh, Rioca, um, 128, I should say. So that's in the uh, that's an entry in the novice uh, handicap uh, chase there. Uh, on Saturday, I do like one as well. At said uh, Down Royal, thought it was very impressive at Gorham Park. Uh, a horse called Cougar. Mark Walsh rides that on Saturday. Uh, McManus Silks in the juvenile hurdle. Want to keep an eye on certainly. And uh, moving on to Sunday, there's a couple I like on Sunday. Really can't wait to look. I'm looking forward to Absolute Notions in the 12:58. Uh, Gordon Elliott trained. That's on Sunday. And uh, another one to mention, um, a point-to-point recruit uh, for the Tizard Yard, 2 o'clock Sandown um, on Sunday. Classic Anthem. Um, he's one certainly to uh, keep an eye out for on Sunday. Um, so that's it. Uh, four I'll put into the mix. Mr. Coyle. And now you stopped you talking as well. I'm censoring people tonight. Yeah. Um, just the one for me, um, he'd probably be short there in... Down Royal on Saturday, a horse of Gavin Cromwell's uh, final orders um, has been a revelation since he's gone over fences, absolutely dotted up in a one or two or rated less hurdle for hurdlers um, in Killarney Beginners Chase and done the same in Cork the next day. Um, he's, I think he's £25 higher than his original hurdle mark at the minute, but the way the horse jumps, um, Keith Donahue gets a great tune out of him, I'd say even he's still well in off 120, doesn't look a strong race. and should win okay well the lads are going to give you their uh five cuts and then their naps and next bests in just a moment but let's hear from i mentioned him earlier the man who's string of been in good form but he's had more of a success as well on the flat in uh 2022 so he's got a lot to look forward to including uh right uh horses representing his yard in the big races at Dan Raw this weekend here Talking exclusively to Champ.ie, the venerable Mr. Noel Mead. Of course, Down Royal Noel is uh, traditionally uh, a meeting you've had great success with over the years. Of course, Road to Riches, Road to Respect, all spring to mind. How are the horses ahead of the weekend? Yeah, hopefully they're in good form. Um, we're, we're happy to steady with the jumping horses that we used to have over the years, but of course, we still have a few nice ones. and. Uh, couple of nice horses running this weekend, hopefully. Uh, one I did want to ask you about is uh, Pinkerton. Now, this looks a competitive uh, handicap hurt. always is. Of course, the grade B over two miles at the uh, Down Royal Festival. But well, Pinkerton won his bumper at Down Royal. Yeah, look, he's a nice horse. Uh, he's he's in very good shape. The soft ground is a help. Uh, the soft the ground, the better, I think. Uh, I'm happy with him. And I think he, hopefully, he put up a good Beacon Edge, the champion chase, grade one, obviously on the car that's on, on, on Saturday. Now, this is a race you've had great success with over the years. Road to, to Respect won it twice and Road to Riches uh, in recent times. How is uh, this fella? Yeah, nice horse. Uh, he tapered off a bit last year at the end of the season. Uh, it was a bit disappointing. He went in Leopardstown. It was Leopardstown. He fell and he 
did seem to knock his, his confidence a bit. He's been schooling well. Um, it's quite possible it's he's going to take a run. I, I, I've done as much with as he can, but it might be that he might take a run. Uh, thought he was as well off running this, the small field, and as he was running in the second season race because he had he had a full uh, grade one penalty. So I thought a chance of this. Um, look, if he jumps and clear around and gets round, he's going to get money anyway. So hopefully competitive race and a good race, I suppose. But there's a few little ifs about some of them. Like, I mean, um, Henry's horse has looked not the horse he was thought last season. He didn't seem to be as good as he was. So that's one house that should be thinking, you know, there's a bit iffy. Willie's horse might be as good on soft ground. And uh, obviously, uh, the favourite is... Uh, um, is is the one they all have to be super one in the bumper I must mention uh, faulty as uh, he's failed to stand up in his two point of points but uh, nice horse yeah no he, faulty goes very well he's a very nice horse but uh, I think from what I gather that uh, the um, Gordon's horse in this race will be extremely difficult to beat I know that been great uh, there's been a lot of people talking about him uh since he won his point of points, mm. and I, I don't think he's been disappointed with what he's been seeing in him. Sunday, obviously, uh, Cork National, you've two entered in here, Siberian Prince and Dol Care. How are the boats, and is the plan to run? Yeah, both will run. Uh, Siberian Prince, I think the distance will suit him really well. Uh, I'm not so sure the ground will suit him really well, because I think he likes reasonable ground. But I think the further he goes, the better he'll be. Uh, Dol Care, he... The farther he goes, the better he is. He has plenty of weight. But uh, the trip is a help and the soft ground, the softer the better. It couldn't be so. And um, I think both horses will run well. Uh, if Siberian Prince holds the handles the ground, he's in with a shout. I definitely think that the other horses are being shout and he's in very good form. Good stuff. Once to mention as well as in at uh, on Sunday at uh at Cork, Ida's boy. Now, this was a mighty performance on uh, on his last chase start since uh, he was he's a winner by uh, 14 lengths on a Cork. Yeah, look, he's a fine big horse. He jumps well. Well, he has jumped well. He, uh, he looks an out-and-out chase. He got him. He won a point to point and he's a big, big horse. He's like, I mean, he's, a, he's over 70. Years. And he did jump very well in Cork. I, that wasn't Greatest race in the world, but he did win it well. Um, I think he will go there. I, I, um, he seems to be at home, and if he is, I think maybe that's where he will go. Uh, we were thinking away to Punchestown for the the three mile race, the two mile seven mile race, Punchestown, the Irish Field Chase. But the look at this one, we might, we may well go there. Super. You've uh, plenty of entries. That's uh, Nace on Saturday. Which one are you most looking forward to? Helvig came over a mile in a conditioned race. Um, he should. I, I've been I've been dying to try him back over a mile because I felt along that he was barely getting a mile and a quarter. So I'm bringing him back to a mile. It's 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 a conditioned race that you would think he would have a chance in, but it's a very good race. Aiden has a horse called Balshai Ballet in it, and there's a couple more high high rated horses, but. Oh, we like Helvig Dream and he loves soft ground. Absolutely. Now, I have to mention two horses in old here before we, we finish up. Uh, one being uh, the Devil's Coachman, because uh, last season he had two runs over fences and it didn't seem to work out, but he's after achieving a fair level of a hurdles last season. How is he? He must have been impressed at Galway with his performance. And what's the plan for him this season? Yeah, look, at I, he was good in Galway. Um, I suppose maybe his jumping still has to come on a bit, but uh, hopefully he will learn as he goes along. Um, he when he was when he had to jump, it's going to tell you jump great. Uh, I think that, that last year when we ran him over fences, we ran him over two miles, which is probably a bit short for him. He's, I'd say he gets he get three miles well. Um, he's soft ground is a is definitely a, a big advantage to him. I'd say he's better on soft ground. Softer the better. 
I was going to say, could you see him mixing it between hurdles and fences like he did last season, or would you see him sticking to one route? No, I would imagine he'd stay chasing this year. Um, look, it, it's in the long run, we have him as a novice this season, so I'm sure he'll stick to novice events this year. I wish you the best for him. He's a really exciting prospect. And finally, affordable fury. He looks like a proper horse. Yeah, look, we, we bought him uh, last year for his owner in Cheltenham, uh, Peter Nolan and myself. And uh, he'd won a point a point for uh, Gareth Murphy. Uh, he's a very good looking horse, big, strong, uh, sort of old fashioned looking. But he'd won his point a point quite well, but we've he's done very little wrong for us. He won his bumper very easy. Uh, and uh, he the other day in Galway, he did practically everything wrong. He ran away and it was a loose horse in the race and he was just wouldn't drop the bridle so he took a lot out of himself and uh, didn't jump particularly well so yes he is an exciting horse so you'd have to be hopeful now that, that he's pretty decent he seems to like soft ground too and uh, seems to have great reserves of stamina Could could you see him making up into a, a graded hurler in the second half of the season? I would hope so yeah well sure that's the dream at the moment anyway Yes and as always, thanks to Noel for his time. Uh, always good to hear uh, what he has to say. Okay, Barry, just remind us again, this competition, um, and again, uh, thanks to Stablemate for their sponsorship. The prize is... Yeah, 100 euro free bet. Said the draw rolls on. We just had two people who had two winners or more in the last two weeks. So only one winner last week, one winner the last uh, the week before that. So they go into the drum, but we're going to run it for another week because it's only two. Um, so um, what we're going to do is just start to catch on the five cast, the five featured races, just to run through them again. Um, Friday, 3.35, uh, excellent. We're going to run through them in a second with um, where the I get the lads to, to, to do their tips yeah. as well. Just asked you about the, what the prize is. So there you've got it. Just remember, you've got to put it not only in the comments, but also on the app. Okay, sir. Down, Fido, yep. down. Um, so let's go on then and do this <laughs> um, to bring this wonderful, no cost uh, spared um, epic production towards a, something called a conclusion, whatever that is, um, and ask you for your five casts. We'll go uh, round the panel with each of the races. One on Friday, four on Saturday. Uh, Holden Gold Cup, 3.35. Exeter Friday. Thomas Coyle. Warlord. Barry Doyle. Grenatine. Ronan Groom. We didn't He's muted, but that was Warlord. <laughs> He's a menace. Warlord. That, <laughs> Can anybody switch him off, or is that too much to ask? <laughs> okay, on we go to down roll the champion chase. Have you switched yourself on, Doyle? And the winner is uh, Envoy Allen, Ronan, Galvin, Thomas. I, I do like Envoy Allen, but I played safe for Galvin and the handicap hurdle at the 158 on the down roll card. Pretty competitive stuff, uh, Barry. Likely favourite wins, Nibiru, Tony Martin. Ronan. Uh, take hold. And Thomas. That's choice. And then we go to the Saturday handicap chases in the UK. The Badger Beer, £80,000 in the pot. Thomas Coyle. Uh, Froden. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, whatever your name is, Groom. Lord Accord. And, and Mr. Doyle. Slip away. I wish you would, but you've still got one more to go. Um, and the last one then of the five is the race over the national fences, the Boyle Sports uh, Grand Sefton. And um, Barry, you'll be under a lot of pressure at the work if you get this wrong. Uh, where are you going? Lifetime ambition. Yeah, it might just come to an end about two sixteen. Um, <laughs> Ronan, um, senior they're nuts. citizen, they're nuts. And uh, Thomas, uh, spirit of the games. 
Okay, and then that takes us, and I'll have my two penny worth on this. Naps and next best of the weekend. Um, shall I start? Shall I be brave? You go for it. You don't want to hear what I think. Let's start with the creativity, the creative desk, shall we? Running group. Um, I'm going to nap, <laughs> nap Galvin. Oh, and you're nuts. Um, my next best is going to be Lord Accord. And uh, I was finished by saying two of the worst shouts I've ever heard in this podcast to back Grenatina, Hunt to 30, and M. Boy Allen at 8 to 1. So I'll put that on record before the weekend. Well, I did say, didn't I, in the first eight minutes, we got Magnus and passed it coming out of you lot. So, you know, you never hold back your views. And I'd never use either phrase to describe Mr. Coyle. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to nap um, past choice. I think he's set up for the race. And I'm going to NB, just get me a winner on the board, uh, final orders and win up in the north on Saturday as well. Uh, Barry? I won't be napping up an even money chance. I'm going to nap. I'm going it's to nap. Uh, Ri- <laughs> Rioca, 15 to 8 available in the 136 at entry. Sean Bone, Harry Fry. And, and the next, next, best. next best lifetime ambition in the Sefton. All right, well, here I go. You can all now have a good laugh if you've been waiting for this good laugh for ages. Nap, Gallup de Chasse for Benicia Williams and Charlie Deutsch at entry in the handicap chase over the Malmö fences and in each way next best a red happy in the badger beer there is a slight chance some of us will be back next week thank you so much for taking part do remember to subscribe as well and uh, do remember that the uh, competition is open but you've got to put it both in the comments and on the app if you want to have a chance of winning that free bet. My thanks for want of any other description uh, to Thomas Coyle, to Ronan Groom and to Barry Doyle. And this has been a champ.ie podcast production. No expense. It's an argument opening up a clear advantage at the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by...